Okay, John, how did you get involved with Assault, actually? Well, there was an investor. This was back in 1975, uh, when I started working on Assault on Precinct 13. There was an investor who wanted to make uh, Eyes of Laura Mars. It was called Eyes at first. And instead, I sold it to Columbia Pictures. So the investor said, well, what else have you got? I said, well, let me try to write something. So I sat down, and in a period of time, it out came Assault on Precinct 13. So, so, so do, you, do you remember your state of mind? I mean, the mood you were at, at the time of you know, writing this film? I mean, where, where, where were you? Where were, where were you in your life at that time? Oh, let's see, 1975, I would have just, uh, my first feature film had been released by that point, Dark Star. And I was not getting any offers to do anything, so I started writing for a living. And around this time I was making a living being a screenwriter, but of course all, all I wanted to do was direct. My state of mind was, uh, Assault came out very freely in terms of what was its content. It, it, it was kind of basically a Rio Bravo type situation in the, in the ghetto in Los Angeles. But it was also other things. It had a little touch of Night of the Living Dead. It had little touches of uh, kind of exploitation movies at the time. Much like Halloween, it was just kind of a free, free type expression. Back then, I didn't know yet what I didn't know. I think later on, you, you find out. How was it working, as far as, I, as, as I'm reading here, you work for the first time with a professional crew on assaults after working with like friends and, and you know, buddies on, on Dark Star. So how was the experience of working for the first time with a big, huge professional crew? Well, I have to correct a little bit. It wasn't a big professional crew. Uh, it was the same, I used the same cameraman that I had used on Dark Star, only we shot, we shot in 35 millimeter Panavision. Well, that part of it was more professional. The equipment was a little bit better. But it was the first time I had ever worked a movie where you shot every day in a row for like 30 days. What I had done on Dark Star was I had gone out and shot a scene or two, come away, raised money, gone back out, and that was kind of a different situation. I wasn't prepared for the amount of work and stress and, and, and how tough it was to make a 30-day feature, so I found out. Okay, go ahead. All right. Uh, was it your ambition to do some kind of a um a modern urban remake of Rio Bravo when you, when you did this film, you know? <clears throat> In partially, yes, I, I've been a big fan of Rio Bravo and the work of Howard Hawks and the enclosure idea of, uh, of Rio Bravo was very appealing to me. And I kind of wanted to uh, recast it in, in, a, in a modern setting because, frankly, at the time, I realized, well, you know, I'm not going to sell a, a cowboy movie. Western, you know, nobody's going to buy it. So, but they will buy an exploitation film. This was back in the days when you could still do those kind of things. Uh, people think that you know, Assault still 20 years after it's still like a modern movie. Do you know why it's still? I mean, up to date. It's still. I mean, it doesn't look like it, like some kind of an old movie. You know, even 20 years after, do you feel. I can't. I can't explain the Assault's afterlife. You know, at the time, it wasn't particularly well received. And, I remember some of the screenings that I had, people were not very complimentary and they didn't think it was very good. But uh, there's something about the style of it and the characters that are they're so uh, archetypal, I suppose, that they last over a period of time. I don't know. Um, our Napoleon Wilson, you know, the, the hero and Snake Pils Pliskin, you know, who's from a state from New York, the, the same character? Well, there are several characters that I've done in movies that are based on the same kind of guy. Uh, Snake Plissken in Escape, Napoleon Wilson in Assault, Desolation Williams in Ghosts of Mars. All of these guys have uh, certain basic things in common, and they're, they're based on a real guy that I knew. Uh, I grew up with him in high school. He was my best friend. And a, a combination of this fellow and uh, my own uh, alter ego. It's parts of my personality. So really not giving a shit about anything. <laughs> and and basically, do, do you add that, I mean, I don't know, like, do you do, like, a list of, of what this character is about, you know, all his, like, psychological uh, and stuff like this, where, where you bring, you know, from the, the, the previous movie and put it there and bring, like, a little thing that is different from the other and so you can build up a new character? Essentially, no. Essentially, it... It depend, depending on the situation, this character is very basic because 
He has one thing in mind, and that's survival. He has a singleness of purpose, which is the definition of, I guess it goes back to Homer, of a hero. And his heroic quality is to, is to survive. He doesn't want to hurt you. He doesn't want to help you. He just wants to move on and survive. But he would do whatever? Whatever it takes. There we go. Um, why your heroes are in many cases either bad guys or rebels, maybe you know it has to do with the character you just explained to me, because, says the guy, you are yourself that kind of character? I don't know if I'm a bad guy, exactly, probably. I'm not saying things. Some people would think I'm a bad guy. <laughs> I, I, would, I don't know that, that I'm interested in people that fit the traditional uh, uh, kind of stereotypical hero mold, flawed or, or cynical uh, people. I, I tend to be a very, very cynical person. You played a small character, in, uh, I mean, small role in, in Assault. You know, could you remind us which one you played? I did? I don't remember that. Let me see. <laughs> what did I play? I don't think I played in Assault. I think I was too frightened to. <laughs> How exhausting was the shooting of that film? Is it true that you shot sometimes 24 hours a day without resting? The last night of shooting was on a Friday, and we had to shoot... No, it was on a Saturday. I apologize. We had to shoot inside of a real prison in Venice, California, and we went in. It was a night shoot. Actually, no, it was in, in the morning. We went in at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning, and we emerged at about 9.30 Sunday morning after shooting in there. The difficulty was in real prisons, the bars, it's lighting those and shooting them. It's a nightmare, it living nightmare. That was the most intense uh, shooting I've had. I can remember being just completely exhausted. Afterwards? Oh, it's horrible. Um, is it true, too, that the stuntmen, I guess they put the stuntmen, you know, a lot of them, uh, of assault, are you friends? He's our friend of yours? Uh, a couple of the guys, uh -huh. actually. Uh, a famous sound designer, Ben Burt, got himself shot out of the window. Yeah, a couple of guys, but yeah. they, they just wanted to do it for the laughs. They weren't really stunned. And as far as the technicians and everything, you, you said previously that you took, you know, uh, the same camera, as, as far as I remember from... Uh, from uh, Doug Knapp, yeah. Yep. And uh, as far as other technicians, you know, same crew that worked in the previous film that wanted to work with you on Assault? Well, I took my, my best friend from... Uh, from my hometown, Tommy Lee Wallace was my production designer, and he helped me with the editing. And, uh, I've used him on several films. He's become a director in his own right. Uh, I know we're going back to just a little bit before, but they, they say here, do you remember a scene particularly difficult to shoot, and why? I guess we're going to talk about the, the prison, unless you have one that is really specifically, you know, even more difficult than that one. Well, you've got to remember, but I was a, uh, you know, my 20s at this point, and, uh, Dealing with actors, I hadn't had a lot of experience yet. And they, actors frightened me. I didn't understand them. So that was a real tricky situation for me. I had to learn. I didn't have any classes on it. I took I, I, I sat in on acting classes, but they didn't help in terms of the numbers of people that you have to deal with and the numbers of approaches to acting. Everybody's a little different. So now, finally, you know, I can, I can understand how to do it a little bit better. But that was the toughest part. Well, was there something to prove to yourself when you did the, you know, assault? As far as I understand, it's a challenge, and, and you know, shooting a very good movie with a very tiny budget. I mean, uh, for you, what was the challenge to prove that you are the director? You know, for once and for all, you know, now I feel I'm a director. Or is it for just to have fun and do films? You know, it's a little bit of everything. I think what you got to realize, I just wanted to be a movie director. This was another chance. Did I ever think it was going to be? big hit. No, I didn't even know if it was going to get released. I didn't know anything at the time, but it was another opportunity. And I, trying to break into the movie business at the time, they know you have to make the best of every opportunity that you have. Is it true or authentic that you tried to do, uh, that you tried before Assault to direct the Rio Bravo sequel? Or is it like just no. a stupid rumor? No, no I didn't do that. No. <laughs> um, it's a second movie, you know, after Dark Star, but already we have found and people have noticed that there is a style that is very strong. Where does that style come from? Says it all. How important is the salt in your, uh, in your career? I mean, uh, there are some elements, I believe, you know, 
that you used in your next movies, you know, The Siege and Prince of Darkness, for example, do you think in a way that the salt contained the roots of all your movies? In a way, it was the beginning of, of, of my real movie-making career. As a, Dark Star was an amateur effort, and, and Assault was my first real film. It was my use of Panavision. I had never used it before. I had to learn how to use it. Uh, I loved the uh, widescreen. You know, I've been in love with it ever since. And yeah, it has the sense of enclosure, that way I deal with the characters. I, there's a lot of things in it, yeah. As a director, what did you learn from this film? Oh. Well, lots of different things, conflicting things. Again, actors are sometimes difficult to deal with, but, but they're good people. And as soon as I realized that what they needed from me, I began to relax. I got, I gained some confidence as a director, you know. I could direct scenes. Uh, it, it was a great learning experience. And uh, just as a man, as John Carpenter, what, what, what did you learn from that experience of doing uh, Assault? Oh, I matured. Every experience matures you, I think. When you, you're a young punk and then you start to go, go through a period of time and you become a professional. Which is always I've ever always I've that's all I've ever wanted to be as a pro. Did you have any expectation when you did this film? I mean, did you did you expect something like you know either money or celebrity or phone calls from the studios or all of it, everything? I want everything in every movie. I want to be lifted above the crowd and and praised as being the great artist. But you know, it never happens. But that's the way you are an artist, though. You know, because you go through the journey. And you know we don't think about the result, and then when it comes, it's like okay, let's go to the next step. Is if if this guy here say assault is a B movie, what would be your reaction? You got it. Okay, so do you appreciate the B? What's your definition of a B film? Well, I used the word exploitation film back in the '70s and probably oh up to the early '80s, maybe up to 1978 or '79. There was. Uh, a whole brand of films, exploitation movies. They could be action films, horror films, science fiction. They were made on budgets, B for budget. And they, they, they worked the drive-ins, they worked the kind of grind houses in, in America, and they were very popular. And nowadays, the A films, the big films, have incorporated all the B styles. So there are no B movies anymore, unfortunately. Sam Arkoff actually shot the whole thing, you know, around, around this area, you know. You just finished like a half an hour on AIP. Um, I read in French magazines that some French companies uh, or director approached you to do a, a remake of Assault. Mm -hmm. That's true, right? It's true. Okay. And uh, if you were to redo this movie or do a director's cut on Assault, I mean, would you change anything to the film? That's the director's cut that you see. What you're seeing is the director's cut. Okay. So there is no more. <laughs>